Every day, every game of the World Series, I used drugs. I snorted cocaine. It had become a part of my life. While I was incarcerated, almost every day, I used to hear people tell me, Willie, whenever you get out, you should, you should write a book. You know, you have a very uh, interesting story. And I do. Willie Mays Aikens was born in Seneca, South Carolina. He grew up poor with an unfortunate stutter. I have never met my dad before, upon his stepfather, who was an alcoholic, in and out of jail. The house that I grew up in, it was a shack, man. I mean, it was really a shack. We didn't have any running water in our home. We drank water out of a well from the ground. You could look through the cracks of our floors and see the ground. That's how poor I grew up. He was born to hit a baseball. Of, of all, he was a great football player, a great lineman. But um, some people are born to do one thing, and Willie Mays Aikens was born to, to swing on a ball. Ended up get, getting a good education, going to college, got drafted, professional baseball player, made it to the top. Aikens was drafted by the California Angels, where he found success in 1979. He was soon traded to the Kansas City Royals and would back cleanup behind Kansas City legend and Hall of Fame third baseman, George Brett. He was a threat every time he got a bat in his hand. He didn't panic. Uh, he was always very confident about his abilities as a hitter. And you can see the awesome swing that Aikens had. Though his team eventually lost to the Phillies, Aikens became the first player in Major League Baseball history to hit two home runs in two separate games in the same World Series. All right, Willie, what does this win mean to the Royals now? Pretty sure it's going to give all the guys on the team uh, a lot of confidence. And um, I got confidence myself that we can come back and, and win the series. He was always a great teammate, uh, a lot of fun to be around, always laughing, always having a good time. What was that time period like? There were players on our team, and there were players on a lot of teams that did that stuff back then. You know, pulled all-nighters, snorting cocaine. Uh, I wasn't in that crowd. Basically, I never realized a lot that he was doing. What did it feel like? Once you snorted it and once it got in your blood, it just it stimulated you. There was no reason for me to stop doing what I was doing. I was playing baseball well. I had girls in every, in every city. I mean, life was good at that time. He had a rhythm. He would do coke. He would try to go to sleep. If he couldn't, he'd do a shot. He'd wake up, he'd go to the park, and he, he still had it in his veins. I don't think he had any consciousness that he was hurling towards a, you know, a major disaster. Then about 1983, you know, the poop hit the fan, and, and he got in a lot of trouble. We had four players on our team thrown in prison that year. Uh, Jerry Martin, Vita Blue, Willie Wilson, and Willie Mays Aikens. Became one of the first players ever to go to prison while active as a baseball player. Mr. Wilson and Mr. Aiken were both uh, sentenced to one year in jail. They already served 90 days of that sentence with the remainder of the sentence suspended. We ended up doing 81 days, but that, that came as a total shock to, to all of us. This judge is making a point. Anyone who either attempts to possess cocaine or wishes to distribute cocaine is very well facing a very severe punishment. Despite spending the offseason in jail, Aikens was signed by the Toronto Blue Jays. He played in just 105 games in two seasons. Though he homered in his final big league at bat in 1985, he was never the same. By 1987, he was playing in Mexico, hitting well again, but back using cocaine. Only this time, he was smoking it. I was a tremendous junkie, but I would stay up all night. And I always had to have my girl. So I started going to these houses where they had prostitutes at and paying money for girls. Aikens was now smoking crack nearly every day. By 1992, he was back in Kansas City, blowing through all of his money 
and on a path toward death. Well, the Kansas City Police Department ended up sending an undercover officer to my house, and I ended up getting drugs for her. They allowed me to break the law four times. They have these laws called the mandatory minimum sentences. So once the amount of drugs got over 50 grams, I became eligible for a mandatory minimum 10-year sentence. People were scared. There was racial dementia. This thing called crack had a hysteria around it that um, precipitated an overreaction. So I turned down the deal and went, went to trial, and I lost. And I ended up getting a sentence of 20 years in eight months, which devastated me. A lot of people have termed it unfair. How do you come out on that? I would say he got screwed. <laughs> That's about all you can say. I think Willie screwed himself. He'll be the first to admit that. That's the beauty of Willie. The system, the system screwed him too. He got set up. I don't really know if you do track time, especially when you have 20 years and eight months. I developed a spiritual life while I was incarcerated. And I truly believe right now that's one of the most important things that I have move with me. And I've experienced what a spiritual life can do to a person. And I want other people to experience it too. In 2008, after 14 years in prison, Willie Mays Akins was released after sentencing guidelines for crack cocaine convictions were deemed cruel and unusual. I was looking for help. And I was looking for a person that could help me get back in, in, into baseball. But you know, once I got out of prison and I called George up and started talking to him, it seemed like I had just been with him those whole 14 years while, while I was incarcerated. We communicated, uh, took him to my kid's high school, and he got up there and he talked for 45 minutes on the dangers of alcohol and drug abuse and gave a powerful, I mean a real powerful message. And yeah, he screwed up. But a lot of guys that screw up don't come all the way back. He's come all the way back. He's come full circle. And that's when I told Dayton Moore, we got to hire this guy. And we're very proud that, that Willie is once again uh, a part of the, the Kansas City Royals. Willie proved over time that uh, he was ready to contribute uh, to the Kansas City Royals because of who he is and the passion that he has. He's making a, a difference in the lives of our young players. It's spring training for the Kansas City Royals in Surprise, Arizona. Willie Mays Akins is back in uniform. Back in the uniform he once shamed. Back working in baseball. Baseball has been a big part of my life. And I was away from the game for, for 20 years. And you get a chance to come out and just be in the sun and work with the kids. And I'm just blessed to be back doing something like this here again. heard the story, but it never hurts to hear it again. Uh, it's a very powerful message, and we're, we're honored that he takes the time to deliver it to you guys. So without further ado, Willie. Morning, guys. I want you to have a long baseball career, and it doesn't get cut short because of the bad decisions that you make off the baseball field. Come to the ballpark each day ready to play because you never know what might happen to one of your teammates. You never know. I'm not trying to stand up here in front of you guys and say everything in my life is perfect and I do everything the right way. I don't. I'm just trying to stand up here in front of you guys and have an impact on your life from this day forward. I think really taught me that the, the more rewarding route is the route of fidelity and mobility and commitment and home. It takes uh, integrity, dignity, courage to all of a sudden go from one extreme to make a change in your life. Some would say the same about you, Willie. <laughs>